Pool players from around the globe have made their way to Chesapeake, Virginia, USA to compete for Pro Pool's most coveted title, the US Open Nine Ball Championship. There's beauty and color in this game, but it's cumanship that scores the points. Each match is a race to 11 games with $50,000 and the coveted trophy awaiting the ultimate winner. Let's screw it together, rack them up, and get it on. The U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship is brought to you by the Chameleon Rack, the one rack for all pool games, the Spider, learning to play through laser technology, the Bar Q, the best damn Q for the money, the Billiard Club Pro Shop, your online pool and billiard superstore, and Chalk Off, the complete pool table and Q cleaner. Now, to introduce the players in this feature match, here's Scott Smith in the Chalk Off Arena. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome those of you viewing live on the internet on billiardclub.net. This is day number four of the 32nd running of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. To bring you up to date, it's day number four. We started with 233 of the world's greatest players. We have approximately 145 players left in the tournament. Total purse is $182,000, $50,000 to the winner. Format is race to 11, double elimination. One race finals on Saturday evening at 7.30 Eastern time. Rules of play are the Pro Express version of nine ball. If there's a scratch and a break, it's a foul ball in hand anywhere in the table. No ball spot except for the nine. Any ball off the table is a foul ball in hand. One push out is allowed immediately following a legal break. Three consecutive fouls by the same player is loss of game and jump cues are legal. At this time, we'd like to introduce our two principals for our feature matchup. Uh, first of all, sponsored by Pool Pro Billiards Outlet.com, also Tiger Products and the Pool Room in Duluth, Georgia. He's a former winner of the huge Sands Regency Tournament in Reno, Nevada. Please welcome from Atlanta, Georgia, Mr. Louis Ulrich. Can we have a hand for Louis, please. Thank you. And his opponent is sponsored on tour by Pool Yacht Sports. Player representative for Mez Cues. He's a former WPA World Nine Ball Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, a former winner here at Chesapeake, former U.S. Open Nine Ball Champion from the Republic of the Philippines, Alex Pegulian. <laughs> gentlemen, you're going to for the first break. At this time, we'd like to send it to the booth. Jim White, take it away, buddy. Thanks, Scotty. Great job, as always. A familiar voice and familiar face with Scott the Shot Smith. Well, the race to 11. And we're starting to work our way down to the business end of this year's U.S. Open, the 32nd annual U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships. And the matches just keep on coming. Louis Elric, Alex Pagulian. And Pagulian with the lag, Danny, and he's going to set things alight here. Well, it is getting down to the nitty gritty because uh, we started with 233, we got 145. Now all the matches tonight are on the winner's side. This is a big match. The player that wins is automatically in the money. The player that wins is in the that place is in the uh, I'm sure this is going to be an entertaining, competitive match. Well, and there's our first look at young Kristen Rogers. She's going to be our rack girl for this particular match. Alex is going to have to focus on the four and a half by nine foot surface, and I think that's what he's reminding Louie as well. Pure entertainment is the lion. My favorite player to watch. Many people's favorite. The race to 11 starts now. He is very colorful. Oh, the soft break. That's been pretty successful. Uh, and you can see, ball down, wing ball, eight ball into the side pocket. Looks like he's got a shot at the one here. Yeah, he does. The soft weight works. He must have been watching his table a little bit because that's one of the softest breaks yet. Yeah, very thin cut on the one here. And he's just looking in his mind the path that cue ball is going to take. This could be the whole game right here if he falls on the two. But it's a big if, you know. Quite it, likely the toughest shot he's going to see in the opening rack. Right. right. Both players hit a few practice racks while introductions for all the outside tables were being made. But still trying to embrace the pressure. 
of the match situation. Never easy. It takes a while to settle in. Yeah, you always like to win the first game of a big match. Uh-oh. Ooh, I thought he was going to go right behind that, kick it out, and be snuffed. He didn't get idea position, but I, he, uh, he does have a shot. Yeah, thin cut into the bottom right corner as we look. And again, just trying to negotiate the angles here to drop onto that three. Cut it. Man, this is a chance for Louis Elric. Probably didn't expect to be getting out of his chair quite so soon. But again, early in the match, nothing is a formality. Yeah. You're not loose yet. You know, in the heat of battle, you have to get loose eventually or you're going to lose. Now, Louis Elric, not really a big name in the game, but. Uh, Recently, in Verona, New York, at the Turning Stone, he finished second with a real, real tough field. And he lost to a Tiger, Lee Van Corteza. And Lee took a big lead right away, and we were worried it was going to be just a, a, a one-sided match. I think, uh, I think Lewis was losing 11 to 2, and he got up and ran four or five racks. And it didn't affect uh, Cortez because he just got up and ran two and out. Well, that was a great shot. He just knocked in right there. Yeah. If nothing else, that's a testament that Lewis is feeling pretty good. Is it Lewis or Louis? I heard uh, it's, Scott it's, Smith call him Louis. Well, his name is Louis Ulrich. And Louis is like nickname, you know. He doesn't want to be too straight on this six, Danny. He's got a little bit of angle. Gonna have to leave himself a nice angle on the seven to get back over the other side of the table for the nine. And this is what he has to do in this match. He would have come in on paper as a slight underdog to Paguline. Yeah, the thing is you want to get perfect on the seven because the nine is not sitting near a pocket. So if you get a little off on the nine, it makes it a way much tougher shot. Let's see, uh, he got the right angle to get to it. He's already beaten one U.S. Open champion in this event. Oh, that's a little brisk, I he think. He beat Jeremy Jones in the preceding round. And quite convincingly, 11-5. Yeah, he's all right here. Good nine. And it is Lewis Ulrich that takes the first rack. He's got the break in rack number two, but it's a 1-0 lead over the Lion. The game starts with a clean table. Get it clean with Chalk Off, the official pool table cleaner of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship. Just spray it on and wipe it off. That's all it takes. Clean your pool table in less than 60 seconds with Chalk Off and the new microfiber brunge. It's a brush and a sponge all in one. For more information, call us toll free. Visit ChalkOff.com or call your local retailer and ask for it by name. That's Chalk Off, the complete pool table cleaner. Alex would be pretty happy with that. I think getting that first one under his belt will help to settle him in a little bit. At the moment, he looks, like you said, not totally ready. It's nice to start and win an easy game. Rack number four, the killer pixie. 2-1, he trails Louis Elric. Well, he broke those a little harder. He's got the one in the top corner. No shot on the two. A possibility here. It depends whether or not Alex could get through to that cushion, but he could try and kick at this, even though it's a full ball snooker. He may try and kick at this. Point it out. Show him what happens if you kick it and hit it good. 
Well, if he can get at this, Danny, and he can just get by the six and into the two there, he can kick that with control, and the cue ball could slide back into here and hide behind cover. And maybe knock the two to here. Exactly right. So this is just whether or not Alex can get to enough of that cushion to make about a three-quarter hit on that two and let that cue ball float in behind those colors. If he can't, he'll be pushing out. You know, it may sound silly, but if he could, but he's going to push out. Oh, he's going to leave it to the other guy. Enough. That particular kick. You know something? It looks like he's just widened the angle a bit. Uh -huh. Louis going to have a look at this. I would not give this back. I wouldn't give it back either. No. If he can get that cue ball between those two colors and get it to two, he's going to spin this. And this is what Peggy Lyon wanted to be able to do. He was he was banking that Louis was going to give this back to him. Yeah. Maybe a hundred years ago they would have. And that's a great that's now. a good shot from Louis Elric. Yeah. I would have never gave that back. I would have never pushed there. But what do you do? He couldn't spin under it and do it himself, so he rolled out and tested to see what this guy knows, and he knows plenty. And Alex is gonna have to kick at this. Looks like right now he's looking at a two cushion escape. One cushion, he'd have to mass say around that six. Yep. Two cushion and hit it hard. Give it a whack. Let something happen. Oh, look at the nines going towards the hole, but not quite. Uh-oh. Any harder, he might have made the nine. Yeah. But as it harder. is, he's left Louie a chance at this long, too. And the three's over the other side pocket. Every chance here for Ulrich, if he can knock this two in, he'll have rack number four well, within his chance. grasp. Good chance. This is the one shot of the rack that if you pack it, you figure to get out. And I think he knows that he's just settled himself back in with this shot. This is a big moment, big shot here. Never well, a doubt. No, he's not missing too many. Never a doubt. And, and he got pretty yeah, good on he's, this He's ball. dropped pretty nice on that three. I think this one's going to have 3-1 on it here very soon. Get that lint out of the way, because you don't want to shoot with that lint there. And I watched him. We played on this table against Jeremy Jones in an early match the other day, and you know, I just watched a little bit of that. I don't know very much about Louis Ulrich, other than what you just talked about, coming second in that big tournament to Lee Van Corteza, but uh, watching him against Jones, boy, he looked good. He looked very comfortable. He's got a real nice rhythm around the table. He doesn't rush himself. He just looks like he's he's the type of player that you've got to go out and beat because he won't beat himself. You're right, and there's no give up. You know, if he happens to get behind, which he's not, uh, he still plays real well from behind. You know, that that's a flaw in some of the players. There's some players, they get in front of you, you're done. This guy plays good from behind. Got a very short action. He chokes up his backhand nice and tight. He's not long and flowing as you'd see from a lot of the Filipinos, but he gets the job done. And he reestablishes the two rack lead. 3 1 now. Louis Elric back in the driver's seat in this one. And with the break, rack five. Where can you find videos of the best players in the world? in their entirety and without commercials. AccuStats.com How about 8-ball, 9-ball, straight pool, 1-pocket, and 3-cushion billiards? AccuStats.com Only one place has it all. Check out our complete catalog on the net, 24 hours a day. Where do you ask? AccuStats.com And we're right back where we started. 3-3 in this match. It's a race to 11. And Peggy Line and Ulrich, just as we expected, nothing between them. 
Alex will be happy to have erased that two-rack deficit that he faced in the early going. He's starting to smile a little. So far, he's been more serious than I ever saw him. But now he's starting to talk to the people, and that beautiful grin is coming out. Yeah, he's got a full grin, Alex. But when he starts talking and enjoying himself out there, that's never a good sign when you're sat in the other nope. chair. No, Louis uh, doesn't like it. Rack seven, and Peggy Lyon. Made a ball on the side. Where are you going to stop, cue ball? Well, he's got a chance at the one. He made two balls again, not hitting them real hard. And like I said, the big breakers should be watching this. But the problem is they get, you know, they worked on their break their whole life, and now all of a sudden they got to take something off it. You know, it, it's tough for them to do. A natural angle on this one. The cue ball is going to track up towards the two. Just make the ball. That's all you have to do. You're going automatically to the two. Uh oh. So no uh oh. Well, he here's a here's a tester for him. Yeah, he didn't want to hit that pink ball. Yeah, I, I think he's going to try and just lock Louie up here. He's got such an easy snooker, and he can he can wedge that cue ball into the four. Yeah, and the closer you put him to the four, the more of the kicking area you take away from your opponent. Yeah, he'd like to be able to get this in where he can slide that cue ball into that pink four and get it in where he takes that side cushion escape away. This is all about the speed. But is he looking to shoot the combination? He can't be doing that, could he? Yeah, I guess he is. Look, it looks like he's shooting it and trying to go two rails because that's where the two will remain. Yeah, that's what he did. That was a big mistake. Yeah, I, you know what? I, Bad idea. Obviously, easy to say after, but boy, he could have really put a good snooker on him there. Right, and it was easy. It wasn't like it was going to be going two rails and putting it. He just had to touch the ball, hit the rail, and freeze him behind the ball, but he felt like shooting. He, you know, he doesn't have patience right no, now. And, and a testament that he's probably feeling pretty good taking a shot like that. Yeah. Well, we've seen combinations shot the last few days, and most of them have been missed. That was an off-angled one. That was really a tricky one. Louie's got a perfect angle on the three. Yes, he does. Nine ball is a game of momentum and swings in momentum. And when you know you've got your opponent in his chair and you're in attack mode, it's always difficult to try and relinquish that, isn't it, and bring him out. And, oh, yeah. and Alex is such an aggressive player. You're right. And, and one other little point there, because I lived it, and it took me 40 years to realize you made a mistake now. Don't be stubborn when you think you were supposed to run out. And that's what the problem is. He, he hit that other, that pink ball, got a little difficult, and because he thought he was supposed to run out, he continued to make another mistake, and, and that is wisdom. You know, don't make two mistakes. Accept the fact that you went astray. Don't go further. Not with good players, because this guy, I've seen him string three and four games. Shouldn't have any problem with this nine. Just taps the chalk on the table. He's never been behind in the match. And with that nine, he assures himself it isn't going to happen right now. Back to 4-3, Louis Ulrich over Paggy Lyon. And the former U.S. Open champion Paggy Lyon will have to sit in his chair and watch Ulrich break in rack eight. Yeah, I'd be afraid of the break. I don't think anyone has failed to make a ball. Like, you know, first of all, we, we say all he made was noise. Right now, there isn't a lot of noise, and the balls are going in. So you've got to continue to shoot the softer break. So they had a good look at the rack after Chris Keenly had just put the cluster together, and he breaks. The and ball down, and... He may have a shot at the one here. Yeah. 
It goes Who's by the way? two. Four three, Ulrich's lead. Whereabouts is Louie from? He is living in Atlanta, formerly of uh, San Diego, California. Well, he's in a hotbed of pool players down in that area. Yeah. Right? That's, you know, Johnny Archer country. Yeah. Cliff Joyner country. And Atlanta is considered the New York City of the South. Oh, he did that. He wanted to knock that ball clear. He ensured to leave himself the angle on the two to develop the three. And now, in yeah. one foul swoop, he's left himself with a great opportunity to go two racks ahead. Yeah, he hit that very well. And got good results. Now I think he's going to go two rails to the six. That gives you the biggest target after you hit the second rail. You're in line the whole way. Oh, he drew it one rail. He doesn't have any nervy action either. I mean, he doesn't waste any movement. Usually it's a sign when players are a bit nervous or not in control of their emotions. You see them walking around the table a lot, maybe back to their chair and, you know, just trying to settle themselves. Louie looks like he's in complete control of his, of his emotions. And I'll tell you, it's... Uh, it's going to be a tall order for Peggy Lyon to beat this man. Well, especially if you shoot that kind of a combination when you had an easy safe. You know, he'll, he'll, I hope it doesn't, I, I'm not pulling for anybody. I just pull for both players not to have a bad match and get unlucky. That's all I pull for. But uh, he's going to be thinking about that, that miss and uh, hopefully he won't get punished too badly. Yeah, when a person plays perfect like this. Yeah. It's cost him two racks for sure. Ulrich is gonna once again reestablish that two rack lead. Five three, quickly slot that ball over to his side. One blue diamond table, six very tight pockets, and nine colorful Belgium balls. Sounds simple, right? Well, maybe for these guys, because they're the world's greatest players competing in the biggest tournaments, and you can see it all on Billiard Club Television. Plus, you get shot-by-shot -shot analysis by the sport's premier commentators. Don't get hustled by the cheap imitation. Watch the best on BCTV. Once again, it's back to level terms. 5-5, five, five, the first 10 racks give us nothing to decide yep. who's going to be moving into round four in the winner's bracket. Peggy Lyon, he knows he's got the break to come in rack number 11. And it's suddenly a race to six. And the pressure intensifies. Well, the card girl doesn't look like she has any pressure at all. For an instance there, nobody was watching the match. Rack <laughs> number 11. And Peggy Lyon, he's never been in front in this match. Oh, yeah. And well, nothing dropped. I think that's the first game that nothing was Lyon, made on the break. On the the well, Louis, the gentleman that he is, saw that Alex didn't mark his score, so he marked it for him. Of course, there's enough witnesses to know it wasn't marked, so yeah. you could be you a gentleman. You can be a gentleman when you know everyone in attendance knows the score. Yeah. Uh, Louie with a great chance. As the balls are open, this is all about cue ball control, and that is the key to success at this level of a professional pool. You control Whitey. Take care of Whitey, and Whitey will take care of you. That's the same. But this could be a little tricky. Does he have an angle to hit? I guess he does. He can hit the rail and bounce out without messing with that five ball, right? Doesn't it look that way? I think he can knock this in and just let the cue ball float back out to the middle of the table. 
and the six and seven are going to be in the same area. So he really doesn't have to do anything too special here. But it's not a connect the dots track. Although, see, he, he did all that so he didn't have to mess with the seven. You know, now he's got an angle to go right to the five. He doesn't have to worry about that seven. Great shot. And quickly, while Louis goes about his business in the chalk off arena, we want to talk, talk about the sponsors that are always involved every year in making an event like this so successful. I want to thank the Billiard Club Network for its production, along with AccuStats here, and of course, Chalk Off, our table cleaner. We want to thank the Bar Q, Sam Syracuse, the Spider Laser Trainer, the Chameleon Rack that's being used here so effectively by Chris Keenley. How about your uh, Canadian Nine Ball Tour? Canadian Nine Ball Tour. Alex just won the last one. Where was that played? Opened, that was played in Newmarket, just north of Toronto. Open to all players now, so make your way on up. There's seven more events throughout the calendar year, right through May. And these players are enjoying playing on the Simonis cloth. That is the best, without a doubt. The champion's choice, Simonis 860 pool cloth. And they're filling these pockets with these Aramith Belgian billiard balls. And Canada is a beautiful country, and Toronto is a beautiful city. I always say, unlike some American cities, big as it is, it's clean. There's yeah, it's garbage all over the place. It's a great city, no doubt about it. You've got everything yeah. there. Any of the players want to make their way north of the border and compete, come on up. We'd love to have you. And Jimmy will buy you all dinner. I'll buy the first beer. <laughs> the nine for Louie. Deposits it, and he is unwilling to relinquish the lead here. 6-5, Ulrich in front of Pagulion. The break to come in rack number 12, but Louis Ulrich punishes every mistake from the Pagulion camp. Hi, I'm Alan Hopkins, and this is the Chameleon, the first rack for all pool games. Its unique tightening features guarantee a tight rack of balls every time. Its classic top-loading design is simple to use, and since players' fingers do not touch the balls, the Chameleon is excellent for league and tournament play. The Chameleon is so easy to use, it makes all other racks obsolete. Contact your local retailer or visit us on the web. For a limited time, get $10 off at the Rack of Champions, the Chameleon. Well, we've been talking about Alex can't afford to make mistakes because Louis Ulrich can play. Well, it goes the other way, too. Ulrich can't afford to make mistakes because he's playing Alex. But I'll tell you something. I was talking to John Schmidt earlier, and even though he ran 403 balls the other day, you know, he said they were big pockets. Today, he said, I don't feel good. He said, I don't feel right. I don't have confidence. And that just showed. Well, as Alex, again, eyes up, nothing at the one other than defense. I can tell you that James Walden beat John Schmidt 11-1, Danny. Mm -hmm. So well, unceremoniously bumped to the loser's bracket. Well, he told me today he didn't feel confident. And Only Nick Barner has defended this title, 89-90. The Kentucky Colonel won the U.S. Open on back-to-back -back occasions. Well, let's not throw dirt on John Brand. I mean, on, on, on Schmidt's uh, face yet, because he's still on the loser's side and can win. Good shot from Peggy Lyon, but little doubt that Louie's going to be getting the jump cue out here. He'll survey the situation. Just in I, his mind, clear what he wants to do, and he's going to go back and get the short cue. I don't like that. He's got a better chance of winning this game if he kicks at this ball because he has a better chance of pocketing it. Yeah, I don't, uh, as you can tell, I'm not crazy about the jump cue. And quickly, another update from an outside table. Larry Neville has just beaten Sean Putnam 11-7. So the truth, still alive and kicking on the A side here at the U.S. Open. Yeah, I didn't like this. And once again, you remember the statistic I gave you? Whoever jumps the ball 
doesn't win that game. And this, this could be a, another case of that. I think the one rail kick gave him a better chance to win the game. Well, this is dead straight for Peggy Lyons, so he's not gonna be able to get position or good position to the two. Okay, so you can't do that. So go forward and get to where you could shoot the two straight on and stop behind the pink ball. Just, I think that's what he's gonna do. Cheat the pocket a little bit. Now he oh, does, well, he yeah, does he have does. this into the side, yeah. Danny, and uh, I mean the angle, the three is right there. I fully expect Alex to take this on. No reason why he shouldn't. I don't know. The only reason would be that you could miss it. The two ball, it's not the cue ball right there behind the pink. I think if you do it 100 times and shoot it in the side or stop there, you'll win more games playing the safe. Because oh. it's not a gimme shot to two ball. He's thinking of both. At 8-6 and with Ulrich ball in hand at the table, I wouldn't have given you too much for Alex's chances in this. Yeah. But all of a sudden, he's played himself back into contention. Okay, what's he looking to do here? He wants to attack here, believe me. I know he does. He's an aggressive player. Get what I'm talking about? I would have rather shot it and stuck behind the paint. I'm not second-guessing it, because the ball was not a gimme. Right? If you're betting on him, you would well, rather have him stick to cue ball. If you look at Alex there... He feels like he just missed a big opportunity. He really a did. Of, a but lot of anguish in that face. He went the hard way, though. You know, he went the hard way. He could have stopped his rock and snookered him for sure. But he didn't. You know, he's out there. I'm up here. Alex has never been in front in this match. Ulrich took the first two, and that set the stage. Peggy Lyon kept coming back at him, just as he is here, but he's never been fronted. And this is some kind of shot this long, too. Is he trying to build up his courage to take this one on? I don't like his end up getting on uh, the three ball. You know. Well, I like it a little better now. <laughs> that was what a, a super shot. shot. Well, uh, it's... That's, well, that's like the best shot that Ulrich's played in the oh match man, to this stage. What a shot. And, and it's uh, due to where Alex left him, or he never would have had the chance to do that. Well, Absolutely perfect on right. a three, too. What a shot. Unbelievable a shot, shot from Ulrich, and what a time to pull it out. That's how you win tournaments. Guy makes a mistake, punish him, and that's what he's about to do. But no problem here. He's got to get enough angle to bounce out for the six. Off the five, that's all he has to do. And I don't see any problem with that. He's going to the right angle, just making the ball. That's it. Yeah, just soft spin this in. He's got plenty of room. Anywhere or even around Definitely. where the nine is. Definitely. The nine's the only danger ball here. He's just got to make sure that he doesn't bring that nine into the equation. Yeah, and he'd like he'd like to get fairly full on the six. Watch out, nine ball. No. <laughs> I'll tell you why. It he was, was toying with that nine. Good call, though. Well, but that was there. You know, to get on the six properly, the nine was going to enter. And he overcame all that. Just roll the six in, and you'll have an angle on the eight to go to the nine. Yeah, another half a roll on that cue ball, and he wouldn't have been able to see the six. I didn't expect him to be that close. Yeah, but you called it. Well, he's answered the alarm bell. Peggy Lyon had the chance in this rack, missed the two into the side pocket. And then Ulrich came with the best shot of the match. Smashing that two to the back of the corner pocket, and it's going to be the same one that's going to be inviting this nine. And once again, Louis Ulrich, 9-7. He wants two more to stay in the unbeaten ranks and keep his dream alive with the U.S. Open title.
this championship is played with the Super Aramis Pro Cup set, the professional ball set that guarantees ultimate precision in your game. Now this top quality set with its through hardened surface, its beautifully engraved numbers, and its new red dotted Pro Cup cue ball comes in a unique value pack, including also the Aramis Ball Cleaner, the microfiber cleaning cloth, and the Jimmy Rempe Training Cue Ball with its manual. The Super Aramis Pro Cup Set, a value pack built for the player who loves the game. Women wiggle more when they walk than men. Do they practice it at an early age? <laughs> it could be. Could be. Rock 17, 9 7 to Ulrich. And the cue ball flying around the table, three into the top corner. Where are you, one? He said. Where? And there it he's is. He's got a shot. He's got a shot at the one ball. Okay, yeah, and he can hit the end rail with center left hand English and go right back away from traffic. Just got to clear everything here and get back to the two that's hanging over the opposite corner pocket. Yes, yeah. Hit that end rail. Oh, no, he looks like he's going to go this way because the two is that close. How do they do that and never hit a ball? I would have gone the other way just because of all that traffic, but, you know, two is sitting easy enough where he figured nothing could go wrong, but how do you not hit anything going through there? Well, right now for me, Louis just got to rope in his emotions because this match is his. It's his to win right now. It sure is. Perfect on the four. Nice angle to float over for the five to the side. Yeah. Alex probably still thinking about that two that he missed into the side pocket. I'd like to have that one over again. That would have got him back to 8-8. Eight, eight. Now he's staring a 10-7 deficit right in the face if Ulrich clears up here and gets to the hill. And a message will be sent around the conference center. You might not know this man very well, but I'll tell you what, he's on a mission the way he's playing. Yep. And the reputation will start to grow, and so will the buzz around here. And all the players that were at Turning Stone already got the message. Yeah, you knock a player like Alex Pagula into the loser's bracket, and people notice that. Speaking well, of upsets, I can tell you that former champion Earl Strickland has been knocked out of the tournament. Yes, he has. He got beat on the A side. Kerry Wartz from New Zealand knocked him out 11-7. Or knocked him to the B side, and then he lost to William Compton 11 6. That was a match played early this morning. Yeah, I, I knew of that. And Earl, I know, is very disappointed, like any champion would be. And to get to the hill. Louis Ulrich on song here in Chesapeake. 10-7 now ahead of Paggy Lyon. He'll be breaking for the last time in this match. And he'll be looking to bring Alex out of his seat to offer nothing more than a handshake. Are you looking for the ultimate one-stop shop for pool and billiard supplies? Then you need to visit billiardclub.net today for everything and anything you need for your home entertainment center. Our huge online store features pool cues, balls, racks, Cue cases, pool table lights, training aids, and every accessory you could possibly imagine. We've got the best prices and the highest quality products you'll find anywhere. Log on today to billiardclub.net or call toll free 866 774 8770. Billiardclub.net. So, will Paggy Lyon get another chance? Not if Louis Ulrich has a say. Rack 
Number 18, 10-7 Ulrich's lead. Oh, two balls went in, but he doesn't need the bridge for this shot. Now we come down to where do you push? Well, Familiar he, question. Yeah, he can where hit the two. It's where does he try to push to play safe here? Yeah. He wants to try and put where? some cover between that cue ball and the two. And it almost looks like the natural angle is there to play a snooker safety. Yeah. Danny, very difficult though. There's a few shots here. There's a few safeties. I don't think he's going to shoot at the ball. The one is hitting the ball here and banking it over this way and the cue ball floating this way. Or I see cutting the, cutting the two here, banking it this way and going one, two rails long with the cue ball. Two safes. I wouldn't push on this shot. I'd rather shoot one of those two. He might be looking to shoot the ball in. That's what he's doing. No, he did a third no, option. No, he went, he went with your first, your first option. Well, he hit it a little he too thin, Just though. exactly, but, but I think that's what he was trying. He was, he but was. Got, got a bit lucky up at the top end of the table. That yeah. two is not available to peg line. Oh boy, what do you do now? I don't see uh, a real good shot for Alex. Only, well, because there's obstructions. If they weren't in the way, the seven and the eight, I mean the eight and the uh, five, he could he could shoot and stick, but he can't do that here. Oh, this could be the rest of the tournament for Alex. Good hit, man. He, he cut that ball and never, never hit the ball that was froze on. Well, Peggy Lyon knows that he's got to just try and buy himself an opportunity here. He's got to get the break back. Just has to string three racks together, win here and then three with the break. He's done that probably more times than he can remember. But he's not going to be able to start the string right here or, you know, it, let's see what happens. He has the snooker safe again. Does he have a billiard on the eight? Can he shoot the two and spin the eight in? I can't tell real well from here. But he does have the snooker shot. And he snookered him with the nine, it looks like. Yeah. Alex might get out the jump cue just to hit it. Or can he hit the edge lightly? It would be a big gamble. Oh, I don't know. This is poor Alex. He needs four games, and these are the shots he's getting. Dirty player, that Ulrich. Two rails safe? Nope. Nope. He doesn't want that to stop over the side pocket. And it didn't. Well, that was that was Alex willing that too to stop, put the brakes on it, the air brakes, and he, he was doing the body English. Oh, he needed it to stop. He want, He's got some fight left in him. He just wants a chance to display it. Well, the fight is 145 players left. You don't want to get on the loser's side already because uh, you got to win so many matches to win the tournament. And you know you're going to be playing good players falling over on the loser's side. And it looks like Alan Hopkins beat somebody over there. Because he just made the nine and went over and shook his hand. I can't see who he beat, but it's a winner's side match, so... Allen must have showed up here prepared to play. Yeah, Hopkins winning the U.S. Open nine ball title back in 1977 and 1981. It's been a, a dry spell for Allen. If he was ever to take the 2007 title, boy, wouldn't that be something? 30 years apart. Well, in all fairness, almost all of the year is taken up by his plans for that show he has every year at uh, 
what is it? Where is it? The Super Valley Expo Ford? in Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. So you know that takes a lot of his time. So I don't imagine he's practicing as much as he used to. Well, Alex is getting his jump cue out here again, Danny, and he hasn't had to jump too many times. And if your if your predictions hold true, Alex is the one jumping here, and the jumpers haven't been winning the racks. No. Whoever jumps loses that rack. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he said slow down. Oh, uh, uh. in case he didn't snook him, he's trying to knock the three ball over there to snook him. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. Justifiable applause, and he smiles yep. as he goes back to the table. He's wedged that cue ball into the corner pocket, and that's a headache for Louis Elric. Yeah. Great shot, because if he hit that ball any thinner, the cue ball would not have died on the end rail. Gonna have to kick at this. Isn't it funny how we talk about stuff like that? The cue ball died on the end rail, you know, which means it, it stopped rolling. Well, was he jumping? Boy, this will be a good shot getting over the three. Wow. Being that close to it. Yeah, he's gonna hit the, the rubber. He's made the two. Oh, that's what, oh what a do. shot! What a shot from Louis Ulrich there. Well, I gotta change a little bit of a statement now. The you guy like, who you jumps like the jumper. first <laughs> loses the rack. What a shot from Louis wow. Ulrich there. Wow. Had to get over that three. Had about two inches to work with there. Never mind hitting the two. Knocked it into the long corner pocket. And he has just given himself a chance to win the match. Yeah, I don't feel I don't see much flaw in this guy's game, any any part of it. He just took a deep breath as he was walking around the table, yeah. just trying to gather himself. Yeah, he's glad that that was over, and now he sees the goal line, Jimmy. Well, sees the goal tell line. Tell you what, he's a deserving winner for me. As big a fan as I am, Alex Pagulian. Boy, this guy, this guy came to play today. Yeah, he outplayed Alex. Yeah, stay tuned for the interview, people. Jimmy White will be going down there. I hope he talks to both players because I, I have one little question in case Louie gets out here. I would like you to ask Alex if when he shot the two in the side, was he at all thinking about just stopping the cue ball and snookering them? Well, would you, you ask him that? You bet I will, Danny. Okay. I think that would well, give I think, a... I think the, you can yeah. pretty well book this one now. I think Louis Ulrich is going to remain undefeated and move through to round four. I don't know how many players are going to be going home. But this guy looks like he's here for the long haul. Peggy Lyon is going to have to fight his way back from the loser's bracket. Fully capable. Don't count him out yet. But this is some kind of performance from Ulrich. And the nine goes down. And there's your confirmation. Louis Ulrich knocks Alex Peggy Lyon to the loser's bracket. Stays undefeated. It's an 11-7 win. Ulrich undefeated here in Chesapeake. Well, uh, Louis, what a match. Uh, you've just beaten two former U.S. Open champions in a row now, and you have to be pretty happy about your performance there. Oh, yes, de definitely. Um, I've played against Alex many times, and uh, this is the first time I've ever won, so it's, it's a pretty good stepping stone for me. Well, if you're ever going to beat a guy, you beat him on center stage here in one of the biggest tournaments in the world, Louis. By our count, we had you down for really missing one shot that we felt you should have made. You thought you missed a couple more. You're hard on yourself. All I, actually, all I really remember is what I missed. So um, I seem to recall I missed the two ball in the corner pocket, and I missed the one ball right over here. Other than that, I hooked myself a couple of times that I probably shouldn't have. But I, I felt like I did pretty good.
Well, I'll tell you one thing. I came down here, I had to introduce myself, and uh, I, I, I definitely know who you are, Louis, and believe me, everyone in attendance here in Chesapeake is going to know who Louis Ulrich is after that match. Congratulations. A great win. Louis Ulrich through on the winner's side now to round four. Alex Pagulain is going to have to fight his way back from the B side, folks. Stay with us. Another great match in prospect. I got Niels Fayen to my left, and then I got Lee Van Corteza. All going to be happening here on center stage. Don't miss it. The U.S. Open Nine Ball Championship is brought to you by Diamond Pool Tables, designed by players for players. The Chameleon Rack, the one rack for all pool games. The Spider, learning to play through laser technology. The Bar Q, the best damn Q for the money. The Billiard Club Pro Shop, your online pool and billiard superstore. And Chalk Off, the complete pool table and Q cleaner. This has been a production of Billiard Club Network. For more, log on to billiardclub.net.